Hey guys, an insulated gate bipolar transistor, that is IGBT, is a device that combines the MOSFET's advantages of high input impedance and high switching speed with BJT's advantage of high conductivity characteristics, that is low saturation voltage. So it is made up of good things from MOSFET and BJT. Let's see more about that. Many of you have requested this content for a very long time. I'm sorry for listening to you guys so late, but better late than never. We have already seen about the MOSFETs and BJTs in our previous videos. Like MOSFETs and bipolar transistors, the BJT is also used as an electronic switch. IGBT is a bipolar device that utilizes two types of carriers, electrons and holes. The best way to demonstrate an IGBT using MOSFET and BJT is like this. MOSFET is connected at the input. And at the output side, there is a PNP BJT that can achieve low saturation voltage which is likely similar to low RDS on of the MOSFETs with fast switching characteristics. So if you see an IGBT has an insulated gate which is not physically connected to the load side. A thin silicon layer insulates this gate. So this is how it has a gate like MOSFET and a collector and an emitter like a BJT. The working of the IGBT is simple to understand. To turn on an IGBT, we can provide positive voltage at the gate with respect to the emitter which turns on the MOSFET. Once the MOSFET is on, it pulls down the base of the BJT and it turns on. Once it is on, the load current can flow through the BJT. Due to this capacitor nature of the MOSFET, the gate current only needs to charge the gate capacitor. So turning on an IGBT consumes very less power. To turn this internal BJT on and off quickly, the gate current must be injected in and pulled out hard in each direction to move the carriers in and out of the base region. So the faster the gate is driven high, the faster the collector current begins to flow. The turn off scenario is a bit different. When the gate of the MOSFET is pulled low, there is no current path for the base current in the BJT. The lack of the base current begins the turn off process. Well, for a fast turn off, the current should be forced into the base terminal of the BJT so that it stops the current flow. Just like we saw the working of the PNP BJT in one of our previous videos with a water flow analogy. If it would have been just a PNP BJT, we would have connected pull up register here. But in the BJT, there is no mechanism available to provide the current at the base. So because of that, the turn off of the BJT is relatively slow. This leads to a phenomenon called tail current, where it's some charge stored in the base region which must be swept away by the emitter current. Well, the faster dV by dt rates of gate drive will turn the IGBT on and off faster. But there are some limitations as how fast the device can switch, especially for the turn off. Due to these limitations, switching frequencies are often in the range of 20 to 50 kHz for IGBTs, which is quite slower than the MOSFETs. Although in special cases, they can be used in faster and slower circuits. As we saw, the gate is insulated by a silicon oxide layer. Therefore, just like MOSFET, an IGBT has capacitances between the collector, gate and emitter. To turn off an IGBT faster, the design engineers provide a negative gate voltage which will discharge its input capacitor very quickly. Like the MOSFET, the collector emitter current of an IGBT can be controlled via voltage applied to the gate. Therefore, the current drive capability of the gate control circuit can be as low as necessary to charge and discharge the IGBT gate capacitance. As in the case of the MOSFET, this makes it possible to reduce the size and power loss of the gate control circuit of an IGBT. We can imagine the IGBT driving similar to an N-channel MOSFET driving. The IGBT needs a positive gate emitter voltage to turn on. IGBTs are ideal for high voltage applications 
because the on-state voltage is very less due to the conductivity modulation effect, which reduces the conduction losses. IGBTs are generally used in high power circuits in both resonant and hard switching topologies. Resonant topologies minimize the switching losses as they are either zero voltage switching or zero current switching. We have already seen about the resonant converters in our previous videos. Please click on this card if you want to know more about it. So in a nutshell, IGBTs have higher breakdown strength than MOSFETs. Like BHTs, IGBTs are voltage control devices, so driving an IGBT becomes relatively easier. IGBT has relatively high switching speed, but it is less than MOSFETs. And finally, it has lower conduction losses. So these are some basic insights about the IGBTs. You know, only 17% of our viewers have subscribed to my channel. If you like my videos and haven't subscribed yet, then please, please hit that subscribe button. It helps the YouTube algorithm to promote my videos to more electronic enthusiasts like you. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the comment section or email me. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.